Hello everyone, Reverend Simon here again with this recorded assembly message. I hope you're all having a good week wherever you're watching this assembly. But now I want to start this with a bit of a game. You're up for a game. I'm going to show some words on the screen in a minute and I want you to think of one thing that all these words are an example of. Okay, so a load of words are going to come on the screen. I want you to have a look at the words and think of one thing that these words are all an example of. So, here we go in just a second. If I do this right, the next thing you should see is the words. So I'll leave it up for a little bit so you can have a think or a quick chat if you're watching this with someone about what all these words are an example of. Now, have you all had to think? What do you reckon? What do you think these words, happy, sad, scared and so on, are all examples of? They're all feelings, aren't they? Examples of how we might feel at different times for all kinds of different reasons. If that's what you thought or said, give yourselves a pat on the back. So next, I'm going to put those words back on the screen. And then you'll hear my voice saying some things. And for each thing I say, I want you to think which, if any of these words, describe best how you would feel if the thing I say had happened. It might be that one obvious feeling jumps out for you straight away. It might be that you think you'd feel more than one thing. That's okay. With some of them, you'll know exactly what I mean and exactly how you'd feel. With some, you might have to imagine a little bit what it would be like if that happened to you. Have you got it? Should we go for it and see how we get on? Okay, so here come the words again and then you'll hear me saying the first statement in just a moment. So here we go. First question. You just hear that you've won an award or a certificate in school. What do you think you would feel? Have a quick think or a chat if you're with someone. I think if that was me, I'd feel a sense of achievement and happy, maybe excited as well. So second one, remember to look at the list of words on the screen. You look out of the window and it's grey and dull and raining really heavily and you are really looking forward to going to play outside. What do you think you'd feel then? I think if it was me, I'd be feeling a bit gloomy and sad, maybe a bit grumpy too. Okay, so number three. Liverpool Football Club had just beaten Everton Football Club 3-0 in the Men's Premier League. What do you think you would feel? Okay, it's a bit of a trick question this one, isn't it? I know I would feel happy and probably a bit excited because I'm a Liverpool fan. But what if you're an Everton fan? Well, I reckon you'd then be feeling a bit sad and gloomy, wouldn't you? What if you don't like football at all? You might not really feel anything. And if it was the other way round and Everton had beaten Liverpool 3-0, then I'd be the one feeling sad and gloomy and Everton fans happy and excited. Okay, question four. Your pet? Goldfish has just died. What do you think you'd feel? Yeah, I know I'd feel sad too. Question five. You've been feeling really hungry, but now you've just eaten a really nice meal of some of your very favourite food and are just nicely full up. What word on the screen might, be, might best describe how you're feeling now? For me, I think the best word from these is content. Number six. Your little brother or sister had ta has taken your favourite toy, played with it, and then hidden it, and they won't tell you where they've put it. I know if that was me, I'd feel angry, and probably a bit grumpy then as well. 
Number seven. Something that you've been scared about, in a bit of a panic about, really not looking forward to has just happened. And you're okay. It wasn't as bad as you thought and you're just glad that it's done with. No need to be scared anymore. How would you feel? Thinking about it for me, I'd probably be happy but maybe calm as well with the sense of relief that it's all done with. That's what I'm like sometimes when I've got a test or when I've just done a test or I've just been to the dentist. And last one, number eight. You've just gone somewhere new for the first time. You don't know anyone, but everyone else seems to know each other and no one is really making an effort to talk to you and invite you to join in. How do you think you might feel then? It's not a nice thing sometimes, is it, when that happens? I know that when something like it's happened to me that I have felt lonely and a bit sad. And I'd say that's why we all need to challenge ourselves to make sure we try not to leave other children out. Anyway, well done. Give yourselves a pat on the back for thinking about those again. So why have we played that game? Why are we thinking about feelings and things? Well, I know, and I reckon a lot of you do, that this week there's a focus on what we call mental health. And that's linked to our minds, to our thoughts and to how we feel. Often we hear the word health or talk about health and we think about things like having a cold or the flu or a tummy bug or something like that. Obviously at the moment, sadly, we're all talking and thinking a lot about coronavirus and COVID. But health is actually about our whole well-being, looking after everything about ourselves including things like how we're feeling and how well we're coping with everything that's going on for us. That game we've just played reminds us that there are different things that happen in our lives that can leave us feeling in different ways. Happy, sad, calm, scared, angry, or whatever it is, lots of different things. And that's okay. But what is an important part of looking after ourselves and each other is to be able to allow ourselves and others to express ourselves and how we're feeling in ways that help us. And I know the theme for this week is all about expressing yourself, finding ways to share things like our feelings and thoughts and ideas in ways that help us and make us feel good. So with our feelings... Say you feel really excited because something absolutely brilliant has happened. What do many of us want to do then as soon as possible? Don't know about you, but I want to tell someone. I want to share my good news, to share my joy and know that others can celebrate with me and be happy for me. Or when I feel angry about something, it's not always good, is it, to bottle it up and keep it to myself. It can be good to talk about what's happened and why we're angry with someone we can trust, someone who can help us, and that can really help with looking after ourselves or with helping others if we're the person that someone else wants to talk to and we can listen. But expressing yourself isn't always just about talking. We can do it in all kinds of ways. It's about finding a way to show how we are feeling that can help us to feel good about ourselves, to express what what we're feeling. Then, like I say, to help us feel better. It might be that if you're feeling scared or nervous about something, you express yourself by doing something that helps you to feel calmer. For some, that might be playing your favourite game or sitting somewhere peaceful and reading a book or listening to some music, or doing some colouring in. We're all different and we all have our favourite things that help us. For some of us, when we're angry, we might need to express ourselves by talking about why straight away. For some of us, we might just want a bit of time to ourselves to be quiet and think before we're ready to talk about it to anyone. Or we express ourselves by doing something totally different that helps us to feel better. 
drawing a picture, doing some exercise or lots of different things that might help us feel better and calmer. It's really important to think about how we express ourselves and how doing that can help us to look after ourselves and keep ourselves healthy. And it's not always easy, is it? And if you ever find any of this hard, I'd always encourage you to talk about it to someone like your teacher or your parents, someone you trust who can help you. And for me, as a Christian and as a vicar, I'd say something that really helps me in all of this, looking after my mental health and expressing myself and my feelings, is my faith in God. And I know that that's what lots of Christians believe. And one of the ways we learn more about the Christian faith and about God and how we believe he helps us is by reading our Bible, which tells us lots of things that Christians believe God promises us. The Bible says that God loves us no matter what, that he cares for us, that he is always with us, that we can bring our worries and our joys and celebrations to him, that we can talk to God by praying and God will listen to us, and lots more things that I find help me through all the good times and hard times I go through in my life. And I know that lots of Christians feel that way too. There's a big, long book in the Old Testament part of the Bible called the Psalms. And that's full of the people who wrote it telling God in the words they write how they are feeling, when they're happy and celebrating, when they're sad, when they're worried, when they're calm and peaceful, when they're really angry and so on. And I believe we can all choose to do just that if we need and want to. That anyone who wants can tell God what they are feeling and ask for his help. And finally, the Bible also tells us that one of God's rules for everyone is to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. When it says neighbours, it means everyone else. Our families, our friends, our classmates and anyone at all. And this for me is really important when we think about looking after ourselves and each other, our feelings and expressing ourselves. Because it means that if we're following that command, we all need to try and love others, which means being kind and helpful. Supportive and encouraging to everyone we come across. And if we do that, hopefully that will help people to be able to express their feelings and thoughts and to feel good if they know that the people they're around, that we're all trying our best to be loving, to love each other, to help each other. And we all need to love ourselves as well, which means it's OK for us to choose to do things that we know will help us to feel good and healthy and that express our feelings and thoughts in ways that help us. So I'm just going to say a prayer now to finish. If you want to say this prayer for yourself, you can listen to my words and say them quietly in your head for yourself. If not, and you just want to listen, that's fine. Lord God, sometimes life can be good and exciting, and sometimes it can be hard. Please help us when things happen that leave us feeling different things. Please help us to find ways that help us to express those feelings and to help us to feel good. Help us to follow your instruction to love each other and to love ourselves. And please be with anyone who's struggling with how they are feeling today. Amen. And just one very last thing. I'm going to leave you now with a couple of pictures with some words on them from a brilliant and beautiful book called The Boy, The, the, Boy, the Mole, The Fox and the Horse by a man called Charlie Mackesy. It's a beautiful book with lots of very important things that we need to think about in it. And these two pictures, I think, fit especially with the things we've been thinking about in this assembly today. So I'm just going to leave them with you now. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.